Dungeon Mans is a quirky roguelike that features necromancy. Like a lot of things in this game, they spell necromancer weirdly. Necromancer, with an S instead of a C. It's quite a nice game in my opinion, and it has pretty nice artwork and just feels well polished. Let's discuss the necromancy that this game implements. You get several spells for creating undead minions with, and all of them require a resource. Whenever you kill an enemy, the enemy drops a skull which you collect by moving over it. This skull is called a dead pulse. The dead pulse will not stay there forever and disappears after several turns, and you can only store five of them at a time. There are four skills that result in the creation of a minion. The first skill is called Raise a Mostly. It's called a Mostly because, according to the spell description, it raises a mostly functional pile of dead parts. Basically what this allows you to do is spawn a kind of bloody pile of bones to attack your enemies with for a short time. After the short time is over, which is a handful of turns, the mostly will explode and deal significant damage to those around it. The second skill you get is called Build Grave Mooks. What this does is expend all the dead pulse resources you currently possess to create skeletons of a seemingly random quality. You get one skeleton per dead pulse. So if you have two dead pulses, you get two skeletons. And if you have five, then you get five of them. So far, I've only seen three types of skeletons come out of this skill, but they've been improving more as I've been leveling up higher and higher. So far I've seen a skeleton warrior with a sword, called a bone sword, an unarmed and frailer skeleton called a discount skeleton, and an archer skeleton called an undead sharpshooter. The skeletons fight well and expire after a handful of turns. Unlike the mostly, they do not explode on death. The third skill you can guess that will result in a minion is called volatile liquidity and it's a curse that deals damage over time to an enemy. When the enemy dies while still under the effect of this curse, it will explode, dealing poison damage to everyone around it, and a mostly is also spawned. This mostly fights for a while before expiring without exploding. The skill costs one dead pulse to cast. The fourth skill is called Freeze Hatred. It costs three dead pulses, and is the most useful summon of all of them. It summons a raging hate glacier, which is kind of like an ice golem, and it buffs you with increased armor. It's very durable and it throws ice shards at enemies. Unlike the other minions, it seems to be permanent and will persist until killed. So let's talk about how this game fits in with my golden rules about satisfying necromancy. Has it got plentiful minions? Well, kinda. At level 6 you can have a maximum of 7 minions, but after a few turns all of them will have expired except for one, the Raging Hate Glacier. So I'm going to say no, it does not have plentiful minions. What about useful minions? Yeah, it's got these. This is where the minions in this game shine the most, they're all very useful. The mostly minion can be used as a meat shield, a generic minion, or a ticking time bomb due to the explosion on his death. It's useful to throw him down to clear out weaker enemies, especially if they're clustered. The grave mooks are great for dealing a huge amount of damage in a short period of time. They can also soak up a lot of damage for you and can buy you time. The raging hate glacier is undoubtedly the most useful minion. Partly because he's not going to expire on you with time, like the rest of them will, but also because of the armor buff he provides, and his ranged attacks and toughness. Are the minions permanent? No, they're not. One of them is, but most of them are not. The game fails hard in this category for all minions except for the Raging Hate Glacier. It does disappoint me that the other minions don't have more longevity, but with the way the game is balanced, with grave mooks being very strong, it'd probably not work very well. They'd have to weaken the grave mooks a bit, 
or make dead pulses drop far more infrequently or find some other way to balance it like weakening the caster a whole lot. Which brings me to the final category. Is the caster weak and squishy? Well, I mean, sort of. The caster is weaker than his minions, certainly weaker than his more powerful minions like the Raging Hate Glacier, but is also very capable of dealing damage. I began with the Firebolt spell, which I've used various staves to augment with different kinds of damage, and it's more than capable of destroying a weaker enemy and putting the hurt on a boss. It has to be this way because of the time nature of the minions. So as you can see, this really isn't my ideal implementation of minions. Most of these categories for satisfying minions aren't met. The timeness of the minions has annoyed me from the start, but I wasn't completely disappointed because of the usefulness of the minions and the game itself, which is good and fun. I do like this game. There's a few things I'd have done differently, but this game is probably going to entertain you anyway. I don't know if I'll do this for every video, but I was trying to figure out some kind of score system for the Necromancer games, so let's see how this goes. For the plentiful minions, I'm giving a 4 out of 10. For the useful minions, I'm giving an 8 out of 10. Permanent minions gets a 3 out of 10. Squishy and weak caster category gets a 5 out of 10. That gives a total score of 5 out of 10. It seems like a harsh score, but we're just assessing the minion gameplay here. And I think this kind of fits my gut feeling on the minions in this game. They're not awful, they're not wonderful, it's just kind of okay. As for the roguelike itself, I give it an 8 out of 10 because it's really nice. It's well polished, fun, has nice graphics and it's just an enjoyable game. It has lots of mechanics and features in it that allow you to remember past characters that have died. For example, your character can fill the library for future characters to read, as well as make a museum for strange artifacts you find that can benefit future characters you create. There's just a couple of examples. I'm sure there's a lot more. Another really good thing about this roguelike too is that it has an overland map. I find this really makes a roguelike so much more enjoyable than if it only takes place in the one dungeon. The exploration aspect in this game is really nice, and there's a lot to see and do. And now I'll leave you with my character dying. Pretty sad. I stepped on the floor somewhere and got like teleported into a room with a tiger. And then I decided to summon some grave mooks, but they all decided to spawn in a different room. As then my character was basically completely doomed, defenseless, had no more resources to summon minions with, and I was pretty much screwed. But on the bright side, at least the characters survived long enough to get this video done.